Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fire of Embers. I'm Drunken Dan. Uh, yeah, we're still doing this. Hopefully, this is yeah. the only time we have to do this episode. I uh, don't say that too loud; it might hear you. Uh. Do you want to? Do you want to tempt fate? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair enough, I guess. What's fate ever done for us? I don't. I don't know. Oh. It, it had like t it had like two games in one DLC route. I guess. That's toward the world tree. Why would he have hair? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're playing Judgment. Yeah, and you're playing Bloodstained, and we both want the other game. Keep doing whatever he pleases. We would want the other game. Yeah, well, you want to play Judgment as well, and I want to play Bloodstained as well. That's yeah. Oh yeah, that's fair. Uh, I just nothing. chose Bloodstained. I, I chose Bloodstained because it. Well, I mean, I'm not playing it right now. I'm recording right now. We're playing the Fire of Embers, but uh, I've been playing Bloodstained on my own um, since last recording. I think I talked about it a bit, but I hadn't played it yet. And uh, yeah, the game's really fucking good. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, all good things. I haven't. So I, I've had. I have had like a couple, like almost every time I played it at night, I have that situation where I look at the time and go, "Oh fuck, I gotta stop playing." <laughs> I haven't really been that hooked into a game in a while. To where, like, not saying, like, the other games are bad, but I mean, like, where I actively lose track of time and I, and I stopped paying attention to it, and then I looked over and went, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while since games have done that for me, but then again, I've lost the I've lost the ability to tell what time it is thanks to all the years of drinking. Nah, uh, probably also the heat stroke. It's not that hot. Is I here. thought it was really hot in the UK. I mean, I thought it was really hot in the UK. I, or was that the couple? Or was it just yesterday? It was like weeks ago. I mean, it's mildly hot today, but it's not like horrendously hot. It's a bit... Okay, because I was hearing like the humidity and shit were really bad over there. So, it's like six out of ten. No, mm. been hotter. Because I know, because I've heard like a, like a lot of like warnings and stuff yesterday where people from like the UK were like, "Hey, be careful, stay hydrated. We don't have ACs Plus, and stuff like that." I know you, no, you don't, because I know like the way the houses are built there well, are more to do uh, because it's colder typically to build, to keep in heat. Well, it's also like you know, it's not much point to having if you only get like three days a week, three days a year of actual summer. Yeah, let me put it. I'll put it another way. Um, I also live in the. I know, I, I live in the frozen yeah. north, so. Oh, you're from the north. Okay. Well, not from there, but even, I, I live there. You're one of those guys. Mm. See, see, uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna then try to make it uh, do a terrible impression of a northern accent because I know better. You don't even know what I mean. I'd, I'd like to know what your what you think a northern accent is because they almost guarantee it's incorrect. Oh, uh, they all sound um, the same. So, uh, so I've heard it a few times. Uh, was so I watch um, Fact Fiend and occasionally he'll let it out. But usually he doesn't use his, his actual accent. Where's he from? He's from Northern. I, I can't remember where he said. I know he's from Northern. What'd you say his name but, was? Uh, uh, well, he, Fact Fiend, but his like name is Carl Smallwood. He doesn't usually talk in it, but there's a couple times where they reference it, and then he actually goes to his his like normal way of speaking. But usually when he's doing videos, he uh, he doesn't because he doesn't feel like being made fun of for having a northern accent. Depends where he's from. He might not even be actually from. He might be not even from the actual north. What is it? Oh, because he might be. I can't remember where he said because he probably said it and I forgot. He, to be he honest. might be. He might be one of those people who thinks anywhere anywhere north of uh, London is north. And they're wrong. <laughs> I'd have to dig up the video where he talks about it again because I don't remember where he said because it's been ages. Hmm. Maybe his YouTube page will say it. Will say it. Possibly, I, I don't know. Probably not, because like I said, it was like something that he like briefly mentioned about, like in a video. No, I just his location, in United Kingdom. Well, then we'll yeah, never know if he's either. really northern or if he's fake northern. <laughs> fake northern. I know it's... some people who live in fucking Birmingham who stay there from the north. <laughs> it's like, uh, well, the first start is the don't, is they don't pretend they're not from Birmingham. That's the first red flag. Birmingham's a shithole. I hate it. Apparently, I lived there for three months, uh, and it was six years ago, and it was the worst experience of my life. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I've, I've never even been to the UK. I mean. 
I guess the problem is we're in a, we're in a very sort of slow week because the big news that happened just like yesterday, so we probably shouldn't talk too much about because I doubt anyone's really know about it for it. Uh, the big news? Uh, yeah, the popular YouTuber Etika died. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously there's not really anything to say other than, like, that's just fucking awful, like, and, like, I'm really sorry for, like, his family and, and shit. I, I do know there were people who are egging him on and they can go fuck off, and that's really all any of us can say about it. Yeah. We... are like, well, man, we didn't think we'd actually do- he'd actually do it. Yeah. Don't egg people on! Seriously, don't. It's not funny. Mm. But yeah, that sucks. But uh, I'll be honest, I've I don't think I, I knew he existed. But he's one of those. He's like pro Jared, and that I knew they were a thing. That was the yeah, first name, I, 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 but I've never seen their content. I, I I didn't really know who he was when the news first went out that he went missing. Um, I until like I saw his face, and I was like, oh, I've seen clips of this guy on Twitter. So like, I can't sit like sit here and be like, oh, I'm a big fan of his work and blah blah blah. I can't do that. Mm. It's just you know he is a, is a guy. Even if it wasn't like a celebrity, just the fact that he, if someone killed themselves is just fucking awful. That's that's really it. I don't really have any like yeah. other things to say. I wouldn't mention it if there wasn't like. Not much else to it. Not much else that cropped up entertainment-wise. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I already mentioned Bloodstain is really fucking good. Um, Judgment's fun. It's the, it kind of I, it makes me feel. It honestly gives me like Ace Attorney meets Yakuza vibes. That's kind of what I figured it was gonna be, to be honest. I'm surprised that more than sort uh, of Ace Attorney-ish looks of it all. Especially when I'm sat there and I'm like, this guy's just Edgeworth. Is that the guy who was cut? No, I don't think so. Oh. I can't remember who the guy who was cut was. I guess I should actually go and look that up so I, now that I know characters can go. Oh, it's that guy. So long as we follow our hearts... But uh, one thing I did see in the game, I think I've joked about it before, but I I'm glad that after like six games, they finally figured out how to rig fucking hair. It only took them... No, no, actually no. I'm sorry. Eight games if we count this one. Because uh, I, I have to remember zero, and then one, two. Because that was like one of the things I was the most surprised about when I saw the uh, trailer with the, with the girl with the shaggier hair, where her hair was actually moving. And I was like, what? They they figured it out? Oh, it was Mo it was Mora's character. Oof. Yeah, that's a problem. He is kind of a major character. Uh, yeah, I knew he was major, but I, I, oh, other really? than knowing he was major, I don't know oh, much yeah, about he him. Is, uh... Well, he was a big time actor in Japan. Yeah, I know that, that. that that won't save you from. Uh, from uh, yeah, the drug a, thing. We 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 if you do drugs. I mean, he was also on yeah. the front cover of the Japanese version, so. Yeah, well, we've been we've been through this uh, conversation like a dozen times. Yeah. So there's no reason to just retread that water again. We should like meme that um, guy and make him popular. I mean, just so like Japan, Japan is like, no, no, he doesn't exist. He did drugs. Stop caring about it. I don't think it will work. Nah. The most you'll get Japan to do is maybe occasionally have a character who might possibly maybe be gay. <laughs> That's about as far as you'll get with oh, them. Oh, they'll have plenty of characters who are gay, just only in a series that is entirely built on that premise. Oh, actually, you probably heard about the uh, yeah, but you probably heard about the uh, the Ava thing, right? Where they changed the, uh, uh, the thing. Oh, yeah. uh, well, they changed. So apparently. Uh, so one of the- I can't remember the character's name, because I'm Kaoru? two in the Ava, basically. Kaoru, uh, the yeah, two, Kaoru. Kaoru and Shinji. Uh, so they, um, changed it. Now, a lot of people were mad at, like, the, the, the translators, but what I learned is apparently, um, the studio that owns the rights to Ava was the one who made the mandate. Ah. <laughs> right. Because they've, 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 they've been kind of- they, they've been kind of doing that. Allow um, me to explain, now, because I ahead. probably bear this- alright. So a lot of the changes they made, are actually just like undoing some of the alterations the original dub made way back in the day and like the changes that are wrong and like of ruin ruin the text and everything are actually what they should have been all along because like you know uh, he, 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 says a, he, says, he says a couple God, of vague yeah, like things that like could be maybe possibly romantic but like not really and the, the new dub like just kept it that way while well, it's the old whereas the original dub went all in into the oh yeah they're totally gay for each other i want to point out though that um they were completely unambiguous though in rebuild 
Like Shinji's just straight up gay. And that one. Well, yeah, but that's that's because of the the way they did it, like the way they animated it and everything. Like him just like staring longingly at him, and then having like unicorns dancing as they played the piano together. Uh, yeah, they 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 were not subtle in rebuild about it. I mean, rebuild so, is not subtle in general. Oh. I mean, Ava's not subtle in general. No, but rebuild even for Ava wasn't subtle. I mean, Ava's pro. I mean, surely like Ava's greatest problem. Is it's like it's a series that at its core it's like okay look at all these people all these horrible people who have all these issues because they refuse to change and you know sort of deal with this and that's bad but then i think a lot uh, i think because they went so stylish and like they drew from such easy things to it's like everyone knows that the whole like religious subtext thing is just kind of they looked at a book and went that looks nice let's steal that oh yeah no he no uh, like he's a, a, like even admit like he, a lot of stuff that he in that was just him just Either he thought something looked cool, or um, Evangelion sounds like a cool name. Yeah, he just thought something that would sound cool. He would just put it but in. I, but I mean, just because you have that element to it, where people, where like people can look at that and go, "Oh, it's like so deep because it's like religion or something." It kind of it kind of skips away from what the actual meat of the story is about, and then that's why people sort of halt up as this prior of like. I look it. I, it's so deep that I don't understand it. Therefore, it's good. Not realizing it. Yeah. Not realizing that I understand it because it's just kind of nonsense. I'm not even saying yeah. it's bad. In, is bad. I just mean that it seems like a series that is hilariously uh, misunderstood, even by its own fan base. That's a lot of like uh, shows, though. I mean, hell, we, we've joked a, a hundred times about like. How Dragon Ball fans often think the series is a lot more deep than it is, or like Toriyama was thinking of this and that. And I'm like, no, he really hasn't. He never did. He never thought of things. He's admitted this. He's been on the record saying this. I've had arguments with people about this. I'm like, no, this is from his own mouth. This isn't no, even me being like an asshole. But it has to be like this because my head cannon has to be correct. So Eva is shit because it's now closer to what the original intention was, is what I've gleaned from all of this. Also, they don't. Also, uh, also they don't like the the new voice cast. Just do what everyone else does. Just watch it subbed. And they del and they deleted "Fly Me to the Moon" from the, the ending because they didn't want to pay for the rights. I mean, I mean, I'm not surprised at that because they didn't want to pay for the rights for the original dub, which were fucking ridiculously expensive. I mean, eh. It's but also, it it's is. bringing in a new crowd of people that have never watched a show before, and everyone is like, "No, you, you casuals, get out of here." Yes. You hey, have wrong? to have, like, I mean, people you, are like that. Or people are like that in general. Whenever like new to, fans to, get into yeah, a but, yeah, but, yeah, but people are like, you have to have studied it for like twenty years in order to truly appreciate. Yeah, it. Yeah, no. This is this is nothing new. People like the gatekeep shit, and whether it be games, movies, TV. It's uh, like all gatekeeping. Well, it's, well, have, this is nothing new. Have they ever claimed that like you need to have watched over a long period of time to truly understand it, or are they just like, no, the old version was better? Yes, out of here? that's that. Uh, that's usually the. That's usually it. It's like you didn't. You're not a true fan if you don't insert variable here that I just decided. You didn't play as a kid, therefore you're not a true fan. Yeah, which is dumb. Yeah, and this is nothing new. This is literally how they operate. Oh, wait, actually. I mean, Eva, Eva has set. always been that problem in that it is both, like, sort of the gateway series for a lot of people, and it's, like, that kind of... It's held up and, like, that... Oh, here's an anime you can watch even if you don't like anime. But, like, it also, therefore, brings in, like, the worst out of people... Worst out of, um... Yeah. For Dragon Ball's fan base, the worst you'll get is... Uh, you'll get, like, like you'll get shit, like, say, if you like GT, or you'll get, like, arguments over, um localization versus the original or like the manga versus the original you'll get shit like that um hell like that, that, that that's actually a fun thing to use when people are being little shits like for example with um if so so you know how i, I mentioned before about the whole like kelly flood kale thing where i mean like uh, I, we talked about this before how like some people are just being sexist about it so when they're talking about like how easy the transformations are um if they're a super manga only canon fuck what i like to do is i take that and I run it into the ground with the idea of the Super Saiyan transformation being fucking dead once Vegeta got it. I mean, because Vegeta, unless you, unless they want to then count the anime, you know, and change their mind, 
then Vegeta was never shown on screen acquiring it. In fact, in terms of on screen acquisitions of transformations, the only ones I can think of are, let's see here, the original Super Saiyan one for Goku, Super Saiyan 2 for Gohan, uh, let's see, uh. Um, we're counting GT as Super Saiyan 4 and. Super, Super Saiyan 4, yeah, I'm counting, I'm gonna count that, and I'm gonna count Super as well. And Super Saiyan uh, so. Ultra Instincts. Yeah, not blue. Blue was off screen. Well, I guess technically you could say, what about Vegeta's super de duper blue? Uh, yeah, we, we can count that. So, most of the transformations in general were off screen, and that includes Kaioken. Kaioken was acquired off screen. Yes. That's all, as was all of its, like, subsidiaries. Yep. Here's the Super Saiyan, and here's the Kaioken, and we put them together. Yep. Dragon Ball's dumb. Remember when he just randomly did that? And Dragon Ball is dumb. And then, like, you know, and happened again. That filler had Pycon in it, and Pycon was good. It was, Pycon was cool. Pycon was better than was a better Jiren than Jiren. Listen, being better than Jiren isn't hard. No, I mean, he First, was just better have... at being Jiren's exact character. Think, like I think said, it. it's not hard to be... Oh, no, I agree with you. I know what you're saying. Haha, <laughs> saying. I know exactly what you're saying. So yeah. Ugh. I don't know. Toy, Toy Story 4 also came out, I guess, and everyone loves it, and I'm sat here and like... But every time... I know what, everything I, I know what the ending Everything is, I, I hear I about it just basically says, Oh, this movie's good. But it's also super unnecessary, and I'm like, isn't that sort of a problem? Yeah, I, is this... That's pretty much what I've heard. I know what the ending is, too. What is They're it? all wrong. Um, that, movie was, that movie was literally terrible and ruined everything good about the franchise. What, Toy Story 4? Yeah. Really? Oh, you saw it? Yeah, it just like it, I mean, well, I mean, it it completely it completely just like threw away all the messages of the previous movie. So well, I, isn't I it just? Uh, you, you know what? You know what? Actually, save us since you're you're the only one here who's seen it. Uh, you, you go off. Go ha go ahead. Have a field day. Rant. Go off. Rant. Well, it's, Rant. It's, it's, Rant. Well, it's, it's your it's, turn. Train man and I do it all the time. Now you get one. It's well, it's just that like the whole thing is that like you know about like a year or two after. Uh, like Andy gave his toys to the girl, and all of a sudden she's just like, you know, I don't like Woody that much. And Woody's like, man, I'm so used to being the favorite, I don't know what to do. But he keeps he keeps on like trying to be the boss anyway, even though he's not appreciated like Andy did, because he's like, well, she needs us anyway. And uh, and then they run into Bo Peep, who like ran away. Like years, it turns out it turns out years prior, she's just like, they were gonna give her way to garage sale, so she just like left. And apparently some toys just like wander off and they're like, oh, I must have lost them somewhere and then they never think of them again. And apparently she can change her outfit even though she's pretty sure she's made of porcelain. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she, she, she was she a porcelain also, doll. She also broke off, she like broke off both her arms, but she just like duct taped them back on and now apparently they work. Because at one point he pulls her arm off and then like they scream like he just killed her, but then she's like, oh, I'm just kidding. I broke right. it off years ago. I mean, this, I won't lie, that's a funny visual gag, but... The basic plot did seem very much like, uh, hey, Toy Story 2's message was about, like, toys getting thrown away, and, like, the sort of... The, and Toy Story 3's message was about, like, sort of the lingering and think like, what how toys help form people as they grow up. So, like, and then Toy Story 4's trailer just seemed to be exactly those two messages again. With, like, is that the case, or... Oh, I guess I actually just need to keep ranting. Uh, I forgot what I was ranting about. Uh, uh Bo Peep with the arm ran away, oh, right. uh, ruins the message. So, so, and so the 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 quote villain of the story is like this, like talking doll character who has a broken voice box, and she's all obsessed with like the she she's in a she's in this pawn shop and she's obsessed with like getting the shop owner's granddaughter to like want to take her home, so she wants to kidnap Woody and take out his his uh, the thing that makes him talk when you pull a string. And like some buddies, boys, box, boys yeah. in the water hole, and uh, they get into a fight over it, and they actually partially rip it out, and then finally he's like, "You know what? You could have it if it's that important to you." So they trans, so they do, they do toy surgery to transplant his voice box, and somehow he can still apparently talk after this. It just means he can't make his his internal thing work anymore, which I guess is why like everyone, every toy can talk, even if they can't actually talk as part of their design, and then. She talks, and the girl still doesn't want her, and then she's like, oh, well, I've just been obsessing over this girl for years for no reason. And I've wasted everyone's time. 
<laughs> kind of an anticlimax. Yes, it is. So, and then he's like, well, you could just keep it anyway. And then he decides, like, he's just going to go off with Bo Peep and, like, hang out with all these lost toys. And, you know, try, try and find... Because they're, they're, they're at, like, this carnival where, like, they, random toys get, like, put into the games and stuff. So, like, we're going to get a good home for all these kids. I mean, we're going to get a good kid get a, get a good kid for all these toys. And then he sneaks off, and Bonnie never notices he's, he's gone because she doesn't really care about him. And the other toys go home. And that's basically about it. Just, like, whatever the messages of the original movies are, it just kind of stomps it all into the ground for, like, hey, just go do whatever you want. Oh, so at the end, Woody and Bo Peep just fuck off to parts unknown. Yes. I mean, you'd think, like, at this point, the story would be about how toys are just becoming less and less, less and less, like, relevant in today's world. Mm. Yeah, no. That would actually be, a, that would have been a more interesting story. Which also, I well, I mean, there's... The only interesting thing is the fourth character. Oh yeah, who, the like, thing. Yeah, she's a, she's like an art project. She makes a school, but then she starts playing with him, and then all of a sudden he like he be, he tur he comes to life as a toy. But he's like, I'm not a toy. I'm a kitchen knife, or I'm a I'm a kitchen fork. You shouldn't be playing with me. This is weird. I don't know what I am. I'm so confused. And he keeps trying to like he keeps trying to commit suicide by jumping in the trash because he's like, I'm a disposable fork. I'm only supposed to be used once. This is going against everything I know. But then at the end, he kind of, like, accepts his place as a toy and everything, and it was kind of weird. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be, like, a reference to to transgender or, like, trans species or... As a toy that is something. literally going to get thrown in the trash at some point, though. Yeah. That's not even, like, the toy... It's not even, like, a toy you'll put in the attic. That's a toy you'll be like, Man, I can't believe I made something this, this crap and then burn it. Pretty much. I mean... Yeah. So, wow, you're the first person I've ever heard to actually be negative about the film. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, no, I've no, usually no, heard people just say, like, oh, it's all right. I mean, well, I mean, like, I, was, I wasn't, like, frothing mad, but I was just like, this is terrible. This is just, like, dump, taking a dump all over everything the first movies were supposed to stand for. And also, like, three just ends on such a perfect note. How could they ruin it like that? That is ultimately the point, okay. like... Toy Story had Toy Story as a series had like a definitive ending ultimately, right? With three, like, yeah. three is very clearly the yeah, this is the last hurrah of these characters because it's the whole point of the seat of the movie or the movie itself. It's the last hurrah. Every you've got to grow up and you've got to move on. Even the toys have yeah. to go have to grow up and move on on some level. So and it's like, well, now you're just sort of rehashing all of these points again in like a really sort of barefaced. I mean, I, I guess th I guess the theme in the movie is supposed to be Woody realizing that like Bonnie is not going to treat him like Andy did, and like his life has to, or, or like his way of viewing things has to change. Seems weird because his way of viewing things seems to be the same as all the other toys who are very much second, like second stringers, right? Yeah. Like Potato Head never really had any problems being, you know. Potato Head is well. Potato Head is Potato Head can is like performed entirely by like old, old audio of Don Rickles, ah. and like he's barely in the movie. Sense. Yeah. What so, happens to Buzz? Does Buzz just say, "Well, I'm staying. I'm sticking out. I'm sticking out." Yeah, he's, he's just like a goodbye partner, and then he goes back to Bonnie. Hmm. And what a. Because uh -huh. he's like, because he has his thing with like the, the other cowgirl doll. Oh, Jesse, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're staying. I can't this. This just I don't know. As I said, I'm not seeing it, so I can't come into quality. But it just felt that like, super unnecessary. Like, what are you getting yeah. out of a fourth Toy Story movie at this point? Like, I feel like you've explored everything with the characters. And yes, I know someone could say, "Well, what are you getting out of another Godzilla movie?" But like. You're getting, well, whatever happened to Bo Peep for, like, the two people that cared about her. I mean, she existed basically so that Woody, so that there was, like, a mild romantic thing. Because yeah. this was, like, back yeah. when, like, a, when, like, romance was more or less mandatory in a film, especially at kids. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah, she was just kind of there. Like, she had a couple lines here and there in the old movies, and then in three, they're like, we got nothing for her, so they're just what? like, eh. Fuck it. I think it also just became harder and harder to justify. I think it became harder and harder to justify like having a porcelain doll running around. 
Yeah. It's like makes sense when it's like, oh, uh, Andy just grabbed whatever toys he got, but like, well, the, movie, that, well, the movie's like, well, well, the, movie, the movie is just like, if she breaks, she can just put herself back together. Yeah, but I mean, and also like, change, and also change her outfit somehow. Makes sense to me. They never really. Use. So yeah, and then she went. She of course she runs around basically looking like Ray from, you know, the new Star Wars. Ah uh, yes. Complete with the staff. If this is our final battle, we should face it in a. So and now and now Andy's gonna come home from college and be like, hey, where's Woody? And she's gonna be like, oh, I lost him. Elise is right. We are marching to victory. He's like, oh, hey, great. what the fuck did you do to Woody? I mean, you've just said, I mean, we be careful now, they might be listening, you might just summarize Toy Story 5. They're yeah. like, Toy Story 5, the, the, the return of Woodums! Oh my god, it's gonna basically be like Star Trek, isn't it? So you have like... I'm just saying, people are saying, like, is it is it a good idea that, like, you go you go back to the sequel and you're like, man, he should have done that other thing in the first movie, like, he, he like, Woody should have just... just Stuck with Andy probably and been like his collector's item that he was somewhat fond of for the rest of his life, yeah. and to, like be given away to a girl who lost interest of lost interest in him in a couple months. I'll see that it's done. <laughs> now he well she got a new iPad so you know yep. it happens. But that's not what happens, is it? I know it's not. I'm just being which is what it should have been. Yes. Hell, I'm pretty sure that's like actually mildly the plot of the new Charles. I re I remember. Uh, one of the uh, original ideas they had back, like in the '90s and like early, like in the 2000s, that they had for uh, Toy Story 3 was like when toys go bad. So when I first heard this, I thought that's what they were going to be doing was that idea of like toys going nuts with the whole, you know, they're actually sentient thing. But no, that's not what they did either. I'm actually disappointed that's not the route they took because I uh, that, wanted to see that. No, I think the original route was just in like the Buzz Lightyear were going to be recalled or something. Yes, I remember hearing a plot summary of like Buzz Lightyear gets recalled and the gang has to go into the factory to try and rescue Buzz. Or something like that, but then we got Toy Story 3, which I don't know, I like it, but I think 2 is my favourite. 3, three is, a, is a decent send off, 2 is definitely better. Like, 2 has everything, 2 has got all the right jokes, it's got all the right fucking characters, it's like basically, it's got fucking uh, Fraser Crane. And, uh, it had it had a better uh, Star Wars esque hero villain meet, meet than uh, Last Jedi did, with the fucking um, Emperor Zerg on the elevator with the fucking Nerf ball gun. <laughs> and that's still like one of my favorite scenes. And Toy Story Two had a really good video game. Yeah, it did. I also, but I, I fucking. I actually was it. Um, I don't know if it's still in Disney, but years ago when I went, to, when I was, when I did get a Disney. They had like the Buzz Lightyear like light gun ride where you kind of like ride on this little thing and you shoot it like Zerg and different it's things. It's still there. That are, like... It doesn't work okay, very well anymore, but it's still there. I'm not surprised given how old it is. And one of the things that happens when rides get older and they're not used as much, the upkeep goes to shit, and then eventually it gets replaced by something. I mean, else. it was there like, like 15 years ago when I went, so. Yeah, so like it's gonna probably get replaced probably if I was to guess, if it probably a, a uh, given where it is probably like a Marvel. I ride. still I still remember. No, they actually no, they can't have Marvel in Disney World. Why not? Because Universal owns the rights to the theme parks. Um, they can, but only with certain characters. Okay, but I mean, like, like their their options for like making rides out of stuff is basically like Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange. I mean, you can literally just root skip the Buzz Lightyear ride, and it would be a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Yeah, actually, there is a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Um, yeah, I can't remember which one it that's is. That's in California. They replaced. Yeah, they basically just changed Tower of Terror to like have Guardians of the Galaxy theming. Although it doesn't look like that bad a ride. It helps that like the. Yeah, no, the, I, I've seen it, but it helps that the well, Tower what I mean of is Terror, like like anywhere other than Florida is like pretty half-assedly made. Yeah, like but all, uh, we we don't know what fingers. all they're like. We don't know what all they are doing with um the uh, like with, with like the theme parking stuff too. So we we I mean giving Disney how they will aggressively buy you if you don't just give them the rights. Oh, I'm Disney, 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 Disney's not going to buy Universal, and Universal's never going. Universal's never going to sell the rights no matter how much Disney offers because like they're their chief com chief competitor in that region and that's the one thing they have on them. Well that actually reminds me, so. I was going to bitch about something Marvel related. 
Oh, go, go ahead. By so all like, means. You know how they're doing this stupid thing where they're like, hey, look, it's She-Hulk, right? But what if She-Hulk was just the Hulk? Yeah. And it's like, uh, no, I didn't know oh, about yeah, this. Like I thought the thing. Done with that no, I think they're still doing it. And like, I found out apparently that that whole thing was hem was penned by the guy who did Lady Four as well. And it just got me thinking that for an idea that's meant to like promote female superheroes and whatever, why why would you take away what makes me like She Hulk? I don't like Hulk because Hulk, while well, Hulk has no personality. Well, the I like She Hulk because She Hulk has a really fun personality. Here's the other problem, and it's though. just it's oh, like good. not good. at all progressive. In fact, it's actually regressive because literally it's the one thing that makes Jennifer Walters like actually unique among heroes, and that she's the only one who actually enjoys having powers in her life. Well, in Marvel. Well, yeah, in Marvel, but like I'm saying, in the, because she's the only Marvel character who isn't like sort of saddled with a bunch of. Mis with misery and other issues, so it's like about suddenly, human torch. yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, human oh torch. yeah. Also, don't forget about Squirrel Girl. Human Torch is the shackled with the problems of being dead half the time. Well, oh, a Squirrel Girl also uh, likes having superpowers. Yeah, but she's bad. She doesn't get hurt. She's nowhere. I would say she doesn't have nearly as many uh, solo runs as She Hulk does. And therefore, doesn't. Well, yeah. No, she's only gotten the one. And so doesn't far. therefore isn't as prominent. I mean, no, no. I just mean it's like there are ones. It's just they're not as um, many of them in Marvel as. But there I mean, are in, like, you're DC. taking away these at attributes that did make her like different, or stand out from the rest of the cast, alongside the fact that she was already plenty strong, and in doing and by instead of like you know building on the character, you're like now she just turns into an actual like mindless rage monster like the Hulk. So it's like you took the Hulk and then you slap a pair of tits on it, and it's like, but that's. Hilariously, like baffling to me because it's so far removed from what made She Hulk actually popular and light and well liked. It, it'd be as lame if, like, suddenly, like the current uh, Miss Marvel, like, just suddenly started having the same powers as Carol Danvers, and they got rid of her like stretchy, shape shifting kind of powers. Well, that's because they're gonna kill off Captain Marvel. I mean, uh, they're killing off Carol, apparently. Supposedly, I highly doubt it. Allegedly. Well, I mean, I mean, she'll come back. She, I mean, I mean yeah, she has she, she has a movie coming out in two years, and she's like, you know, yeah, she, she'll come back. They're they're trying to make a storyline with her because Carol doesn't really have many storylines. Man, story her lines. books are tanking though, apparently, like ridiculous, like, bad sales. Actually, what's funny is uh, you mentioned that. So I was um, so there's a pair of like they made like a bunch of uh like Captain Marvel dolls. Uh, like back, um, like uh, back when the movie came out, and they they have not Go moved for, in the store. The same store got to Yeah, they have not moved since uh, they got put because, off. Because spoiler alert, kids don't respond. And I I've always thought this a bit stupid, where people like take this attitude of oh well, if people only sort of are familiar and can uh, can you know uh, sympathize with people who are like them in some capacity. Whereas, like, you can't just be that people have, like, attributes of a character or just generally like a character. No, you own, no, one of the key points as to why you like a character is because they are the same race, sexuality, I political... Was it, like, as a, ki as a kid, um, to kind of actually, uh, buttress your point a bit, so as a kid, when it, when it came to the X-Men, my favorite characters were, uh, let's see here, Rogue, uh, Storm, Jubilee, Gambit, Cyclops, Wolverine. Let me guess, because you watched um, the '90s cartoon. Yeah, I'm going by the '90s cartoons. These are like, and also, and like Beast. Oh wait, no, actually, uh, Scratch the Wolverine and Cyclops. I liked um, Beast and Nightcrawler more. But that's what I'm. Yeah, and that's and that's what I'm getting at is that at the end of the day, you don't like character. You don't. I, I guess some people oh. might say, "Oh, it's oh, I want these characters to be to like think like I do and be like I am because that justifies my own life choices or my own." sort of way of thinking, but I think that the end of be all is people like characters because they're good characters, right? And rather than, like, sort of have the attitude of, like, sort of trying to, of, like, it can't it can't just be that Carol, you can't, like, for some reason, they, this is believed that you can't just have, like, a strong female character who, or a female character who's just, like, a character and is strong. It has to be that you have to make the core concept of it, they are a strong female character. 
By which I mean, like, you have to make it abundantly clear what who they are by beating it over heads and, like, how much better they are than everyone else. Like, we've all seen the sort of worst-case scenarios of this, where you have, like, the characters who are just the aces at everything, and, like, then you get these moments where it's like, hey, look, they're beating up all the... they're showing these, like, horrible misogynistic guys that they are the power of the vagina. It was like you think of all the other like sort of really popular ones who have stood the test of time and how they didn't have moments like that. I mean, I mean you can, I mean you can deal with like, like uh, issues with sexism because uh, actually, funny enough, Kenichi uh, deals with it. A yeah, bit. you can with with with, with, with the Kasara and Freya. Oh, you can definitely deal with it. But like, what makes Kasara and Freya like strong isn't that isn't with like is it with you having to constantly just sort of play it pad of like the lowest common denominator of saying like, hey, look. They are women and they are strong. It's like, oh look, here are these really ah. skilled martial artists. Also, I guess they're girls. I, I mean, it's like they they do deal or deal with sex in their story. I was using this example of like doing it uh, doing it right because they do a really good job in their story. Hell, it even comes ahead with the whole Kanichi and her thing. Where, um, actually, I, I need to stat this stuff up. So, can you kind of explain it better? Because I'm going to be stuttering like an idiot while I'm trying to like basically level up characters because I got my ass. Well, the whole point is is that Kanichi has this like moral code where he refuses to fight women, right? For what? Because he has this thing of chivalry where he's just always been taught, no, you don't hit girls, it's not right. By the way, all of his masters, men and uh, which are men and women, actually start laughing at him when he oh, says yeah, Everyone this. else points out this is an incredibly stupid idea because he will fight a lot of people, a lot of women who can and will kill him, given a chance. And it's not never a case of, oh, and I mean, hell, Miu is like a better martial artist than him for the vast majority of the series. Yeah. The whole point is, it's like it's not a matter of like are they in, of, they're in theory. In fact, most of them are better than him. He just has this moral code. He will will not break from it. It is said it's a form of chivalry, but you know. But then, of course, the trait. But then, like Kisara does still fight, and she does fight men, and she fights everyone, and beats, and she and her fights are never clean either. If she, she's a punk. Yeah, but I mean, if she even if she wins, she still gets some scrapes. Like, yeah, she gets beat. Yeah, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Like, victories uh, aren't effortless for her, or really any of the characters. They all get beat up in their yeah. fights. Like, uh, that's one of the things too. In the the, the way that they treat fights, uh, regardless of the gender of the characters, it's they treat it the same way for them as any other character. They don't really like, um, like pussyfoot around in terms of like someone just getting socked in the face or what have you. <laughs> Think of it more like, uh, for the audience, think of it more like when you play a video game, it doesn't matter what gender the other character is that you're fighting, you beat the shit out of them just the same. Fact, That's kind of how Kenichi does it. And in fact, what I like the sort of core, uh, core sort of, the core fight between Kisara and Freya when they uh, finally come to blows is based off of Freya having this mis having the idea that you can only, st she can only sort of compensate for like physical, uh, uh, the physical difference between men and women by using weapons. Kisara's like, no, you just be better at kicking people. And um, Kisara wins in the end. She gets sent to the fucking hospital in the end, but she wins and proves her point. Yeah. Um, so like, you can deal with it. It's just a lot of um, stories that try to. Or shit at it. Well, I think because in order to really sell, because you need to sort of sell it, but like you need to do it in a way. But like, I think it's also sort of the same sense of like almost misguided chivalry thing, where it's like nobody really wants to, well, nobody really wants to see like a woman be get beat the fuck up usually, right? But, but like, yeah. and that lends to the problem of like, well, you need to sort of make it so that women come away from fights semi clean, like. Because, well, then you'll be accused of just sort of being abusive to women by having one get, like, punched in the face. And socked in the face a whole bunch. Like, if they get as badly yeah. bruised, and, like, I don't know if this is true, but it definitely feels like the sense of almost, like, women are still treated as dainty figures, so you can't knock them around too much in movies. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I've been kind of critiquing that for a while. Like, what was it? Uh, this is wrestling. I but, um, so there's this really stupid match type that they have in WWE. Now, by the way, a lot of independent uh, rings will just have mixed fights, and it's just like, whatever. they just like, yeah, they have a match. Is there a storyline about it? No! But, uh, but in WWE, they have this thing called mixed tag. So the way it works is one team is, uh, both teams have a, a male and a female as uh, the wrestler. 
Now, here is the rules with it. Uh, basically, I, I figured this out from the game. So, when, uh, if the, if, so it starts off with both of whatever gender in the ring. If one of them tags, like say, like, let's say the guy tags in, tags in the girl. Uh, you pretty much have to immediately tag the other girl in, otherwise you, you will get yelled at by the ref, and if you don't, you will get DQ'd. This isn't a joke, this is, this is what happens. Um, now, in terms of the actual fighting bit of it, if the girl, um, hits the dude, it's fine. So, how I learned in the games, if you want to win and cheese it, tag, start off, uh, set it the st start off with the dude, um, as soon as you can, tag the girl in. And then beat the shit out of him. And he literally cannot put her, his hands on her. Because if he strikes even once. DQ. And you win. So you can literally just beat the shit out of him. The entire time. Mm, yes that's about right. And that's pretty much how that. Um, how the rules of that fucking thing work. And it's stupid. And honestly it is misogynistic. Because it's basically saying like. Oh well um, he can take the blows from the woman. Because clearly she's weaker. But if she gets hit, oh, well, that's just... She can't, because she's a woman. Yeah. And clearly weaker. It's sexist. But I think there's... I know I, I know it's misplaced chivalry, but it's sexist. Yeah. But I, and I think another problem that comes specifically in, like, movies is sort of... the movie Is sort of... To stem from that is that... Because you don't really want to see women, like, too badly, like, struggle as badly as, like, male counterparts would. You run into this problem of making them them seem like they can do or making them seem win fights sort of effortlessly like oh i won't get too much into the reyes mary sue argument because you know we can be here forever about that but like one of the key things is that she does win fights without really trying at all against people who are far more seasoned than her and she doesn't lose a single fight like there's not really a case of oh like i'm sorry i know she's fighting old man luke and all but he doesn't, they're not using lightsabers and he doesn't have the force but like still come on you can't even have her just get knocked down get like tripped up by luke is that, is that like how she beat kylo ren on her first attempt even though she never held the lightsaber especially, especially especially when especially when he's the one training her Cause um, like when I write like say like the sensei student thing, while they're especially while they're they're learning, I always have it be clear that while this character might be skilled or getting more skilled, the person teaching them is still worlds better than they are. And then so like they it, when they the spar and they like yeah, they don't. It's not like a full fight, but it's like kind of the. Oh, she's mad because Luke's keeping secrets about his dark and troubled past. No, no, no I, I meant I meant her and uh, Kylo. Oh no, because they have the throne room fight instead. Remember, where they have like oh, all of those guards with and, 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 and Ray unveils her latest in force power. Which I was, I, I was, I was like the problem with uh, the problem with uh, her beating him like the first time she tried is that like well now what? Yeah, like, is she just, is she just going to beat him every time? Well, they, they sort of like, almost hand wave that in Force Awakens by saying, "Oh, well, we've got to go and complete his training." Well, not yeah, even doing then, that. No, no, I'm, doing but that I mean, the, the thing is, there, there's one movie left. It's not like it's not like they're going to lose in the final battle. We yeah, but like the, so, is, so yeah. If you don't remember what happens in the Last Jedi, is they go to the throne room and then, haha, surprise! Snoke gets killed by Kylo Ren in the really predictable, obvious way that he's literally describing. Man. He's going to kill his hated enemy. Hmm. That's ominous. Oh, it means me. Shit. Oh, I don't. Oh, I am the dead. And then they fight a whole bunch of his throne room guards. And that's when Rey unveils her latest and greatest in force powers. The ability to make a knife that was about to stab into her back vanish. Put me in. Have I ever actually explained that? Uh, also, no. in the throne room fight, the choreography is actually really sloppy, and there is a point when where Ray is like fighting a guy with like twin knives or something, twin like vibro knives or whatever, and he like grabs her. He has like two knives in one shot. She like moves her her body moves and covers his hand, and then like the split second afterwards, his second knife is gone, because otherwise there's no justifiable reason why he didn't just stab her. Beyond, well, that's not what the fight choreography said would happen. They can literally they air bright, they get rid of the knife like midway through the fight. It's not even like reshoot. No, they just edit it out and post and hope people didn't notice. But your brain did. Sorry, I just wanted to do that. But it's like that kind of level of, yeah, and it's that kind of yeah, like 
the fight, that's the fight, that's the annoying thing, is that fight scene was probably the only thing, the only good thing people had going for it, and then even that's trash. I'm just, it's like, so apparently, like, even though they're, like, m mortal enemies and everything, like, she's going to beat him every time, like, at least, like, Luke lost to Vader and then had his big rematch in the final movie where he finally won, which is, which is usually how those things go. But here's the point, like, yeah. Vader wins almost every altercation he's involved in, like, the only one he doesn't the only the main one he doesn't win is in a new hope where he gets like shot by Han uh, while they're in the while in the tie fight. Just but like you know he had Luke dead to rights then he had yeah. he beat Obi Wan Obi Wan suicided but well yeah but Obi Wan beat him earlier like in Episode three well no he had the high ground they were no he had the high ground then they were both on even footing he had no chance. Yeah, so once you hit the high ground, it's just unless fun. you're unless you're Darth Maul, in which case the high ground does nothing for you. Yeah, you split in half, and then you fall, and then you get spider leg. But like, then, like, oh, sorry. It's like it's like the two characters from uh, Super Robo Wars Compact Three. Which two? We're like the uh, Folka and uh, Fernando. You, they've they've never probably never been in a game that you've played before. But basically, the gist is that Folka is better than him in every way. Even though like he's a player character and the other guy is a rival, and literally every time they fight, he just he just stomps his face in. Even though he keeps coming up with more like he keeps on locking power ups, and he's just like, well, that doesn't matter because I'm just better than you. Ah, it's the shoe. Pro it's and the it's shoe Masaki problem. Gotcha. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Well, I mean, Fulk is a little cool. It's just, it's just, just but it's just like it's weird how like the usual rival dynamic doesn't exist here. He just keeps stomping him in, and finally he's just like, well, fine. Well, it's because I guess, I'll, I guess I'll never ever beat you. Well, that's also that's why you have that's why you have all, all the arguments that Reza and Mary Sue because she's never actually ever challenged. Like, there's no single moment where it's like, oh, Ray had to really struggle or try for this, or she failed. No, she just accomplishes everything. And well, it's there, like I mean, there are there are characters that do cause him to struggle and fail, and just just not the guy who's his designated rival. Oh, I meant like, like I was talking about Ray. Oh yeah, well. But, well, who does who does right. really fight? Other yeah, than I can't. I can't think. I, uh, I can't think of a time that she like actually really it's failed. Not even other just than, like, fighting, it's like everything she does. So like, the first like, okay, so she's beats up a bunch of random people on the streets. Fair enough, no problem with that. All right, so then they have to fly away. So obviously she picks the Millennium Falcon, of course, because that happens to be on the planet, right? And then so not only can she fly the Falcon, she can also repair it, even though she's. As far as we know, never flown the ship before, or has ever really flown a ship until this point. It, it would have made more sense to have Finn fly it. Except, think, they, except think... they already established he's not. He can't fly a pilot. He can't fly a ship. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Because because fuck, fuck, fuck. Fly. It's been a while. Well, like, he, well he's a he's a stormtrooper. He only knows how to shoot things. Like oh. they don't teach them how to pilot. Except for the pilot troopers. But like. So she can fly the Millennium Falcon, and what's worse, she can repair it better than Han Solo can when they meet up later. Oh and yeah, I forgot about that. She just kind of yeah, instinctively just... knows how to do, like, force mind control. And then she just sort of grabs a lightsaber and instinct- Oh, so there's a point where she, like, sort of snipes a, sol snipes a storm tripper with a pistol, which in of itself nobody would have- would either be that bothered, bothering, but it's the fact it's that coupled with, like, her being- Everything it's else. Yeah, on top of that, and then finally, you know, she gets the lightsaber and she matches Kylo Ren. And it's like, it, here's the problem, right? Because a lot of people will say, oh, Kylo Ren got shot by a Wookiee bowcaster, and that means he was weaker. And that'd be fair enough, except it was part of the Star Wars canon stuff they still left a lot, left alive and around, and they've been like reaffirmed multiple times, is that Sith get stronger when they're in pain. Well, I mean, they get stronger with their. I actually too. didn't know that. They get well, thing is, some like they get stronger when they're in pain to a point. Like, if you're if you're like mortally injured to the point where like he wasn't that mortally injured. He got up. He was like I mean, running around lightsabering people. So I, I mean, if I mean, if you have like a big hole blown through you, it might be more detrimental than helpful. It might be, but then as I said, it didn't really seem to encumber him that much. So I'm willing to say that it did. That if we're gonna say. If we're gonna say that the Sith get power, get more power if they're in pain, and then we'll just say, okay, maybe the shot was enough that it offset that, so he didn't actually improve. But it's still I mean, like him, more or less okay right. fighting a girl who's never held a lightsaber before in her life. Vader was and the lightsaber is a lot from like the from like getting and a lightsaber burned off, but 
that just made him weak. And, uh, I wanted to add to that. And, like, a lightsaber, like, if you could say, like, oh, she has experience fighting, but, like, the weapon she used before, a staff, it handles a lot differently than a sword. Plus, also, she uses a staff against people who are mostly unarmed. It's not, like, versus someone yeah. who's literally been trained to, like, use a lightsaber in, like, combat. It's the difference of, like, like, it's one thing to be able to hit people with a stick and beat up people who don't have a weapon, but it's another thing if you're against someone who has a similar weapon, and more than that, training in how to fight people who are using the same weapon. So it's like, as I said, it's all of these factors combined together that push into the Ray can do anything problem. And because there is never a point where she has any sort of failure or challenge, like, I mean, fuck, man, the end of The Last Jedi is literally like, oh, and then she shows up and she lifts a whole bunch of boulders first try. Like, at the very least, say what you will about Luke and uh, and, Han, and Han, they have, like, very real tangible mistakes and fuck-ups. Yeah, no, I agree. And then it makes it more sat, and it makes it far more satisfying when you see Luke beat Vader than if than it would have been if he'd have beat Vader in Empire. I mean, if he beat Vader before, then Vader doesn't feel like that an obstacle anymore. He just feels like an annoyance, kind of like Team Rocket showing up for the fortieth time. Like he's intimidated by Kylo Ren at this point, even before he got mimed to death thanks to his grandpa pants. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I honestly, I, I'm pretty sure never really found that, him like intimidating. Yeah. I just thought him as a kid. Yeah. The intimidating factor I, went away the instant he took his helmet off. And then, but that's the point. So you have, because, but then he was held. But then before that, he was held up by the fact. Oh, what about Snoke? He might be cool, I guess. Oh, turns out he wasn't. Turns out he's do he doesn't matter because. Turned out they wanted they wanted to subvert everyone's expectations. Because who wants like a well-crafted story in today's world? Now you just like. Oh, uh, we just want to make sure that the internet people can't guess it correctly months before the movie comes out. And that's the stupid thing. It's, just, it's, the, the, it's not even like, like it's not even. So like so okay so, I, I just want to go into that. So um I don't know this. This is a guess I had while playing Bloodstained, but like in, in Bloodstained, I'm pretty sure I know. One of the characters going to betray you is uh, Dominique from uh, the church. Like, I, I just had this sneaky suspicion. And I'm going to be honest with you, if she does betray, and I called it, that that's fine. It doesn't mean I think the story is worse or anything. Well, here's the thing. I, I, for, like, yeah. most, sto most stories, just because at this point, everyone is aware of narrative conventions and stuff. A story isn't necessarily... Like... Okay, you go into most stories, you know the good guys are going to win, or at least come out in a more or less favourable position, right, at the end? Like, yes, that's not every story, but it is a large amount of them. Like, you go into yeah. a Marvel movie, you know the hero's going to win. You went, Like, people went into Endgame, and they knew, everyone knew what Endgame was going to be. Like, you knew what it was going to be. I knew what it was going to be. Sabo knew what it was going to be. Pretty much. Like... Nobody was nobody was really surprised at Endgame, but it's still like is well. Like, the only thing that took me by surprise was Widow. Oh, because she got soul stoned. But yeah, man, because she had she still has her movie coming out, so I was like, oh okay. I kind of figured she, if anyone, was safe, but all right. I thought her movie got cancelled, or is that still? Oh, it's still coming. They're shooting it right now. Yeah. Maybe it'll be her twin sister. Twin sister. Ma. Or they'll just make it. Or they'll just use the second Black Widow. Well, they, they think they think they're gonna use it as like in the past to also set up the, the second Black Widow in the future. But like, I mean, it's still starring her, and she's still gonna be in most of the movie. But so, like, you know. But I mean, the vast majority of people who went into Endgame knew what they were getting at, and it's like, still doesn't stop people enjoying it though. There's just one video of this right. guy who like didn't watch a single one of the Marvel Universe movies. Like he went to go see Endgame, and like he was, he was just lost throughout the entire thing. Man, no surprise. <laughs> hey, I'm watching the second part of this two-part movie. I don't know what's going it's on. It's like if you it's like if you've never seen your anything Dragon Ball related, and you just watch Broly. It's like like he had a vague idea of who the characters were because he was he was somewhat familiar with Marvel from like cartoons and stuff. But like when the portals thing happened, he's like, "Why didn't all these guys come out to help them earlier?" And someone was like, "No, they they were dead the whole movie. They just used the glove to bring them back." And he was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." 
probably should have seen at least Infinity War. Yeah, no, well, that, yeah. well, that was the whole point. They, they were just like, because he was like, he had no interest in any of the Marvel movies prior. So they're like, you know, it'd be funny if you go and see this, like, big climactic movie of all 20 movies with, with, with absolutely no context to anything. He's like, yeah, I guess it would. Okay, I'll go see it. Yeah, it went bad, and then, yeah. But, like, went bad as well as you'd expect. As I said, most people who knew what, knew what, roughly what they were getting out of their game and everyone else seemed to enjoy it. I thought it was fine. You know, yeah. I think a few things I didn't like about it, but nothing like. I, th made... I mean, I, th I think that, I think they made a few questionable decisions, but you know. Yeah, they brought back MCU like, Spider-Man. Well, uh, but, but I mean, as as far as like you know, rather than using it as like a way to get people like, accumulated to the newer characters and use the old characters to like pass the torch to them, they just kind of milked the old characters' last move for all it was worth. Like, okay. like they were just trying to get they... as much money out of it as they possibly could in case it doesn't work later on. Well, yeah, that's what they're trying Which to do. I kind of suspect will be the case, but that's more or less, a, that's just a theory. We'll figure out as time goes on. Like, we'll see what ha all happens in the end. No, like, we we're just like, like, not there yet. Like, rather than just hoping that, like, people really like Carol later on, because she's the one they decided to be the face of the franchise, maybe they should have, like, spent the majority of the movie, like, you know, having her interact with the popular characters and get a feel for to make people like her more first the problem is that like that's not what they that's not what pe the, that's not what disney and i guess any corporation really wants they don't want they seem to be under the illusion of a character of great characters just exist they don't they come about because of like new of like numerous reasons and it's like hell most like incredibly pop most characters people like hold above all else come from entire franchises where of content where they get developed and challenged and changed it's not just that hey look here's this one character we put in one movie and now she's gonna and now they're gonna be the face of everything yeah like so so like uh iron man got popular because of the movie but, like iron man was still a character uh... for like 40 years or yeah, less, like, but I mean, like, to be fair, to be, I'm gonna talk about mainstream popularity, because he's still... Because remember, he had an animated series back in the 90s that did not do very well. It was a shame. It was, the second season was, was pretty decent. First season was kind of... Yeah, we... The first season very much reeked of the... Yeah, the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man 1 did pretty well. Actually, I think the Hulk series was really good. Yeah, a lot of those didn't, like, a lot of the other, other ones other than Spider-Man, uh, and, uh... Oh, X-Men, right. X-Men and Spider-Man. Right. And X-Men, yeah, they, they did great. The other ones didn't do too hot. Like, so remember, event they had Avengers back in the day, and nobody fucking cared. They had Avengers, but they were like, it's the Avengers, but you're not allowed to use any of the real popular characters. So they had to make do with, like, they, they had to make do with Ant-Man and the Wasp as, like, the headlining ones, which was my first major, uh... Like, well, this was back when obviously, like Marvel had been didn't have like a parent company with like its own animation with like connections, so they basically like, like sold off sold off characters to highest bidders. Like they could have Captain yeah, America. Yeah, because they were Iron Man they had one so, so 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 like uh the the money that they lacked back then was really noticeable to where like say so the X Men cartoon was good, but like it had didn't have half the budget of the Batman animated series to give an idea. Well, that's because, yeah. That was actually funny, because I was re I was slowly starting the rewatch of BTAS. Which, I guess I might go more into deep into more detail when we get to part two. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm just, this, I might actually split this off into two videos, because this level is taking a really long time anyway. Because I'm looking at the time and how long this is taking me to beat. I might, like, kill this opponent I'm fighting right now. And then pause it, and then we'll continue off next time. Because Jesus Christ, I think this is the final level, and it's just taking a long time. Because the enemies are just like damage sponge, or just like um, damage sponges this time around. Makes sense. All right. Yep. That's what I think we'll do. Uh, tune in next time for more of this nonsense when we'll talk about Batman. And funny enough, I've been watching Batman Beyond on my own. Ah, so we got some interesting frame of references to draw from here. Yep. So, uh, see you guys next time and have a good day.